my broadcast button. Yeah. Yeah. You already started that? Um, it's already on red, yeah. Yes. The webinar is now broadcasting to all attendees. Yes. Now the, yeah. There you go. Yeah, we got it. We got it. So everyone's streaming in. You can see Hendrik has just popped in. Matthew there. Christina. So we've got quite a few people coming in online now. We're saying. Hi, Sam. Good evening. Declan's coming in. Good evening, everyone. Dania's in the room. This is good. So I can see people coming into the room that are actually doing the exam. This is great. So let's just give it a few minutes for everyone to uh, take a seat. We're going to be recording these sessions, so we'll, everyone will be on mute. Amongst online, so we're getting a few of the committee online here. This is great to see. Neville, Paul, yeah, we're getting a full house. Tarek. We've got a few people from the UK popping in. So we've got Callum, good evening, Callum. Raise your hand if you want to say hi. So we've got. Uh, Quite a few people online. So let's just give it one or two more minutes for um, Zoom to let everybody in. Um, we did have over a hundred uh, people register for tonight's introduction. Okay, so <clears throat> we're approaching about 50 people. I'll give it two more minutes and we will start at um, five past seven. So Julia, can we press record? And let's get going. Okay, so we've just got a few more people to come in the room. And then we'll get started. Okay, so we got somebody left the room. <laughs> okay, so I think we've got everyone that's going to turn up um, online. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, this is the first module in a season and a series of six or seven sessions where we're going to do the introduction to the Chartered Membership Exam. So I'm just going to do a brief overview of the exam and the exam techniques. Um, this year I'm taking over from Matthew Esther. He always does a very bold uh, and a very informative introduction. In fact, I think he's put people off uh, before because they've realised how hard and challenging um, this exam is. And I will make no bones about this, that's exactly what it is. Um, but by using um, our preparation course, um, we've got some few testaments to that, uh, you will be armed and ready to take the CM exam. So I'm John Price, I'm a fellow of the Institute of Structural Engineers and the immediate past chair. Online, we've got Sama, the uh, chair, and a few other members of committee, which I'll introduce to you on the way and our journey tonight, okay? Um, I took the exam myself, was 20 years ago now, um, and it's not got any easier, it's not got any harder, it's the same. So, okay, so the itinerary for the course over the next two months, we've got six sessions. <clears throat> so session one is the introduction now. So I'm going to talk for about 45 minutes uh, and take a Q&A at the end. 
and then we'll work, go into the workshops. <clears throat> so session two, workshop one, um, is in two weeks. So Julia and Iman will be leading that. Then session three is going to be a talk where Sama will go through the concrete and steel design tips. Workshop two will be towards the end of July with Declan Caffrey, who's our senior vice chair, and Nabil Ottery. Workshop three, when we get into August, we'll be with Sama and Sajid Kumar. And then on session six, we're going to have a mock exam and a review, <clears throat> where under time conditions, and we're going to take some of your papers and we'll review those and mark them. So I'll be doing that along with Hamant. Okay. So look, <clears throat> this year, as you can see, we're doing an online course. Okay. So we're going to put some faces to the name. So we've got six sessions. So clearly you can see off the video, that's me for session one. Session two, so Julia's online as well. So Julia yeah. is a member of and she's waving away. Julie's a member of committee and got chartered this year. Uh, Iman, who's been chartered a few years, is going to help her. So you're going to see here, actually, you've got people in a rectangle and people in circles. So the people in circles are people who uh, do a lot for the committee. They're not on the committee, but they're very close to and uh, help out the institute every so often. And I think it's important that we pull in people that are not just committee to help us. This, the CM preparation is a very important part of what we do um, in the UAE. So there's Sana, um, he's online as well. So Sana will be doing session three. Session four, we've got Declan, and he's on the committee, senior vice chair, and then Nabil, who is online somewhere. Now Nabil works for Razzle Kamer uh, Municipality. So he also got chartered this year. So what we're doing is we're bringing in people who have just got chartered, who have gone through our course and have been successful in doing so, um, because then our course becomes more meaningful. Instead of me who did it 20 years ago, um, rattling on, then you've got people who have just passed or within the last few years have passed as well. So you get the broad spectrum of people who have, can give you good advice. Session five is Sama and Sajid Kumar. And Sajid works for Killer Design. And again, he also got chartered this year. So you can see here, we've got three people who got chartered this year and who also took the course. And you'll see some more evidence of that later on. And session six is myself and uh, there's Hamant, who also got chartered this year. So you can see that we've got a good balance of people who got chartered a long time ago with the dinosaurs like me. And through the ages to the point where we've got four people here who got Chartered this year. Okay. Now, most of you that are online, the 50 odd that are online, will, have, will know that we have a YouTube channel put up online. So, to cut down on some of the lecturing time, I pre recorded a bunch of videos here on our YouTube channel. And it's imperative that on this course you look at these offline before you do the workshops um, to give you more background knowledge in tackling the actual workshops and then ultimately the paper. So <clears throat> this one on time management there, and that's your own personal time management. Um, there are people online here that know and have done the course last year. So the likes of Callum, I'm Callum and Christine has popped into the course before. I go on and on about time management. Okay. It's, We'll come onto the slides about time management later on, but it's just imperative that you have your own time management. There's something there on steel tips. Um, this year we don't have a geotechnical lecture, but we do have the slides. It will take you about 90 minutes to actually go through this, but again, it's important that you do so. Then there's one on drawings, method statements, and program, which are all part two of the exam. And you need to look at these before you give us material on our workshops. So there you go, go and check it out. Also, we're broadcasting live tonight on YouTube as well. So look, your regional group, we're in the 21st century. Okay, so that's enough of me talking for a bit. We're gonna have a little poll, okay? So I'm just gonna pop this up 
Simple question, simple answer. So let's uh, launch this. I'd like everyone just to have a think about when they're doing it. Some of you online have already booked. So, yeah, some interesting results. So let's say we've got 55 people in the room, 60 to include us. So I've got eight of you taking it in September. I know some of you. January, quite a lot of people. Um, July, not sure. And someone who doesn't want to take it at the moment. Now, get to the end of this and you'll um, rethink about that. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll now and you should see the results. Uh, can someone just put the thumbs up, Julia? If, can you see the results? Share the results. Okay, yeah. So there you go. We've got 10 people taking it in September. Okay, I don't know a few of you. And then 17 taking it in January. Okay, so it's important that, look, I know what some of you are already doing past papers. They're already taking in September, which is great. Okay. Um, but that's interesting to know um, that you're doing it in January. Um, maybe feedback to us in a few months if you'd like us to run anything closer to the time as a refresher. Because um, usually we only hold it once a year. But obviously we're in uncertain times at the moment and we're here to help whenever we can. So if you want something to be run at the end of December, feedback to us and let me know. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on, so that's interesting to know. So look, <clears throat> what's this course gonna do for you? It's gonna clarify the purpose of the CA exam, okay? So those hopefully that are doing it in September, no. It's gonna outline the key aspects, guide you to manage your time well, and draw your attention to pitfalls. We'll try and guide you in time and identifying the key components of the question, and we'll indicate what the examiners are looking for. And of course, give you the opportunity to participate in workshops. Please participate, okay? Please. We'll come to some photographs about that later. Um, so this is gonna be interesting for us as well, because we've not done it online before. Um, but hmm, let's, um, let's keep going. So just on that point about indicating what examiners look for, we do have an examiner on the committee, okay? So we do have someone who knows what the examiners are looking for. So I feel that the committee that you have that's running the CM preparation course is probably one of the best you'll ever get. So make use of us. So look, this course will not do the following things for you. It's not gonna teach you to design. If, you, if you've come to see how to design, then this isn't the course for you and you're not ready, okay? Um, I do know someone who went to one of these and then went, no, no maybe I'll do it again next year. And they did. Um, we're not going to teach you how to take an exam. Um, we can't guarantee you a pass because the pass rate is low. And again, I've got another slide later on for that. There's no magic bullet. There's no formula to pass in. This is just out and out hard work. Okay. You know from your personal lives and your professional lives that it's engineering is hard work, this is no different, okay? Because as it says there, it cannot replace your experience, your preparation and your hard work. Okay, so what you will be examined on, your understanding of engineering principles, very high level, your ability as a structure engineer. You won't be tested on the detailed design elements, but you will be tested on your ability at conceptual design, okay? Which is the whole point of us running workshop-based course. We've got to get you thinking about conceptual design because it's a big issue. Not here, globally, for engineers, okay? And remember that the poorly conceived design is one that has, a properly conceived design, sorry, is one that has a simple structural arrangement. Keep it simple. I've gone through my life at trying to keep it simple and it's done okay for me. So candidates that prepare themselves to be competent, structural engineers will pass the exam. If you've got, you're competent, you will pass. 
those who don't prepare, those, those people who prepare themselves to try and pass the exam will not, okay? You've got to be a competent structural engineer. If you're an incompetent structural engineer to try and pass, you just won't do it, okay? <clears throat> so let's have a quick look at the CM exam, okay? What you will be examined on, okay? So let's just look at this first. Members are very proud of being a chartered member of the Institute of Structural Engineers, okay? Um, there's a handful. There's one or two online listening in, and there's one or two listening in from committee as well. And, and you know, they'll all raise their hand if I say, are you proud to be a chartered member of the Institute of Structural Engineers? I have been for the last two decades, um, and that just shows you how important it is, okay? So, little map of the world. The exam's taken on the same day throughout the world. So from Hong, working from left to right, from Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, North America, Canada, the UK, Europe, South Africa, UAE, India, same day, okay? You are required to attempt just one question and you've got five to choose from. The questions are visually identical and context predictable. Okay, we'll have a look at a paper as we go through, just a high level. Um, well, let's move on. The exam's seven hours. You can't leave the room only for the toilet. <clears throat> You've got 15 minutes to read the paper. You put pen to paper in them 15 minutes, you'll fail. <clears throat> you got 30 minutes for break for lunch and you've got to do it in the room. You're not allowed to move out of the room. And the invigilators, as far as you're concerned, are not experts, okay? The volunteers, and they're there just to make sure that you are there for the exam and you adhere to the rules, okay? They will not answer any questions. Um, they're not experts. <clears throat> so let's move on to the structure of the exam itself. So for those, and I apologize to those that are doing past papers, and then we'll just come on to that in a second. Um, two parts, <clears throat> part one, part two. So part one's all about conceptual and part two is all about detail, okay? 100 marks, 50 marks, you need to pass parts one and two, but you don't need passing all of the subsequent subsections. You need to attempt all subsections to stand a chance of passing. The pass mark is 40, okay? It's very low, but only a few people get 40 marks. And they're designed to cover a broad range of structural types, okay? Some are steel, obviously. Some are obviously concrete. Some could be either. Some could be other materials. And you've got a good chance of finding a question within the realm of your experience. So you speak to anyone that we've got online that took the course recently or took the course decades ago, um, you'll find they've got something that they can design. For me, it was question one. I opened the paper, saw it straight away, gave it the 15 minutes and went on with that because I'm a steelwork specialist. The first question was steelwork. It was my question. Um, so that you'll find something, okay? And the questions have evolved over the years to include complex geometries. These are not made up questions. These are all projects that have hit the drawing board, have been built, so they're not made up, okay? So still on the structure of the exam question. It's an open book exam, okay? So you can take in what you want. <clears throat> but if you look at that image there, if you take in that many books, you'll fail, okay? You have no time to look through books. Take in three, take in four. Taking a concrete book, taking a steel book, take a foundation book, take it, but no more, okay? You take that many books in, you fail. <clears throat> so it's an international exam, okay? And it avoids regional or language bias, despite one or two people that I've come across over the years who say it's all UK centric. It isn't, okay? It doesn't matter whether you're in the UK, the Middle East, North America, 
the Far East, okay? You can design these wherever you are. They're not code specific. You can use whatever code you want as long as you state it. <clears throat> so everyone strives to answer the questions in a similar way. The chief examiner and the marketing examiners are from all over the world. And like I say, we've got one in our committee. <clears throat> um, they're usually they're marked by two examiners. And if there's an issue, the third examiner will come in. Okay, so there's no bias. <clears throat> and there are no trick questions. There are no hidden agendas. It's just you being an engineer. <clears throat> So the purpose is, I mean, it's a tough but a fair test of engineering ability here. And the questions will contain aspects of the following. They're there to scare you, okay? Large complex spans, high loads, difficult sites, discontinuity, spans with things missing, complex geometries. It's there to test you, okay? So you're basically doing one week's work in one day, okay? So yeah. Difficult site conditions, heavy loads. So expect big numbers. Just don't be afraid of using big numbers, okay? <clears throat> so you're there, you need to produce an economic and a viable and a stable solution, okay? If it's not viable and if it's not stable, you will fail virtually instantly, okay? And it has to be economic, okay? You need to demonstrate your understanding of engineering principles, spanning different structural materials and forms. Engineering judgment, you need to demonstrate. Importantly, your ability at conceptual design. <clears throat> As I mentioned at the beginning, keep it simple. Use simple analysis to solve a complex problem. You don't have a computer, you don't have a printer. You need to use your pencil, okay? I ran this course, must be three years ago, and someone said, where do I plug my computer in? I uh, <clears throat> nicely and gently showed them where the door was because they clearly were not ready to take this sort of exam, okay? And it shows you can cope with uncertainty, okay? We're talking high level engineering skills that precede detailed design and key components to good design, okay? You don't need computers for this. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what are you expected to produce in the exam? Now, obviously, we will go through a lot of this in the workshops in big, in big detail. <clears throat> but you need to understand the brief, okay? If you don't understand the brief or you change the client's brief, you will fail. It's automatic, okay? You need to produce two distinct and viable solutions. Now, this is going to come out in the workshops, what's distinct and viable. You can't be doing steel work for two of them and just vary the column centers by one or two meters, okay? <clears throat> That's not going to work. You need to be able to produce a workable and stable solution if there's instability, immediate and automatic failure. Don't go sticking a movement joint on one side of a bracing element when you expect to hold the building up. Fail. <clears throat> Produce good drawings. This is another big one. Um, you've got no CAD here. Start practicing your sketching skills now. Okay. One of the things that people get very few for marks for are good drawings. <clears throat> The ability to write a good letter. Now, when Matthew gives this introduction, he always says that if English isn't your first language, then make sure you give this more time. And he will state himself, is he? His first language isn't English, okay? <clears throat> so he gave plenty of time for his, his letter, okay? Make sure you're faster in other areas so you have time to do a good letter, okay? Produce a detailed method statement and construction program. <clears throat> now, this is where it's important that you look at the YouTube programs that we've done. They go into a great detail of how to do this. Because <clears throat> you'll see the examiner's remarks later on um, where people fall down on these, literally. 
um, because they can't produce them. <coughs> and you need every mark you can get. And you need to plan and manage your time in the exam. Taking a clock. I'm not joking. Taking a clock. <coughs> What will you be expected to produce, okay? Again, the workshops, you've got a lot of this. You need to use simple sketching to demonstrate where the loads come from, where the loads go, and describe and demonstrate how the stability is achieved. And at all times, make sure the sum of the moments is zero, some of the horizontal forces are zero, and the vertical is zero. We want stability, okay? So just on these sketches, and now I know online there's two or three people that <clears throat> I mentor uh, or have seen my lectures before. We use colour. When I did it 20 years ago, they told me to use colour. So, <clears throat> and uh, I think Julie will start nodding as well. You know, just use colour. <clears throat> Make it pop out from the exam paper. Um, the examiner's only got a short space of time, maybe an hour if that, to mark your paper. And if they can see clearly where your load's coming from and your forces, then it shows them, uh, you as an engineer now to communicate and communicate clearly. <clears throat> okay, so the marking process, as I said, it's, it's rigorous, double blind. So there are two examiners, poles apart usually, and then adjudicated by the chief examiner, okay? It takes half an hour to uh, mark, and that means probably it's picked up some failure marks. Um, but yeah, they can get a good idea off the paper very quickly, if it's good or not, okay? Um, <clears throat> the marking's moderated to consider the character of traits of markers. So you may have someone who's really, um, really hard at marking, and will mark you hard, and then someone who's probably lenient, and they'll know this um, from the from the tests that they do of the examiners. So then they'll moderate them somewhere in between. Okay, and the script will be judged on whether it's appropriate, and there's not a prescribed correct set of answers to the questions. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. All of the Model answers that you'll see are just someone's interpretation online, and I'll show you the links later on. Um, it's not the answer, it's an answer, okay? The marking system is, is a peer judgment, okay? So it's just like gymnastics or figure skating. So someone might give you an eight, someone might give you a 10, and you'll get a nine, okay? So that's what I was talking about before, it'll get moderated. And there are automatic failure points. Like I said, if you change the brief, there's instability and a few others, you'll get automatic failure points. It's just straight in the bin. <clears throat> okay. So the exam paper. Okay, so now I'm getting used to this. Let's see how many of you have actually seen an exam paper. So let me just... <clears throat> Launch. Launch the poll, so our exam paper. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so let's see. Let's see in the audience is actually seeing these. Okay, that's good. So we've got a good range of people there. So <coughs> two thirds of you voted so far, and eighty percent of you have actually seen a paper. So that's a good start. That's a good start. So we'll need to educate the no's and those that didn't vote. Okay. So we we'll share the results there. So as you can see there, I mean we've got sixty-three people online. And um, just over number 50, 39, 40 odd voting in place on. <clears throat> so it shouldn't be surprising to see that. Okay, I think mean, that was where's that? That was <clears throat> July last year. Okay, so that's what a paper looks like at the front. 
read it, okay? If you do past papers a lot, still read this when you go into the exam, okay? It has important notices on there and reminders, okay? As soon as you walk in that door, you start to forget things, okay? So read these two pieces of paper very carefully when you go in the exam, okay? <clears throat> this isn't from that exam, but it's just a typical representation of the exam. You'll get a sketch, some dimensions, <clears throat> and then on the other side, you get the question, where you get the client's requirements, they will give you the loadings, um, the site conditions, what to omit from your considerations, okay? Usually it's a core, usually it's a staircase. But read it, and then if it says omit it, don't do it. You're wasting your own time, okay? And then this is where the similarity on each of the questions comes in, okay? So what you'll get is part one, part two. 50 marks each side. These, as from um, early 2000, are the same. Uh, these always say the same thing. Prepare a design appraisal, part A. Part B, after the design's incomplete, the client explains he wants to change the, sub, the structure somehow. So write a letter, okay? Section two, prepare sufficient design calcs including the foundations, their general arrangements, detailed method statement, construction program. Now these have got to be in sufficient detail for a quantity surveyor to produce a bill of quantities, okay? So <clears throat> that's what that looks like. <coughs> um, and these are some sketches. I purposely made them blurry because <laughs> you need to do your own sketches, okay? You need to be able to produce two distinct and viable schemes. Um, that's what that's showing, okay? Well, these in the workshops, the moderators in the workshops will go through all of this. This is just a sample of what you would need to produce in the exam. Okay, so what do we do to pass this thing, okay? So when you go through one of my time management modules, okay, you'll see this slide, okay? But it's an important slide. You need to communicate with the marker, okay? Be neat. I'm scruffy. I have to spend time being neat, okay? Because you're trying to communicate your ideas across by paper and a pen, okay? So it must be understandable and easy to follow, okay? If you can't communicate, you won't get marks, okay? So there's the breakdown of what each part consists of and how long you've got to do it. Use this as a time management tool, okay? You've got 160 minutes to do part 1A, which is the concept, okay? If you can't finish it, move on to the next question, come back if you make up time, okay? So there you go, seven hours, 420 minutes, 100 marks. So every four minutes you need to make a mark, okay? So that allows 20 odd minutes to choose the question and check it over at the end. So this is, you're on the clock, okay? So my advice is always is to take a clock, do a program. It's your own personal time management. But we'll go through that in the other lectures, okay? And there's a pretty pie diagram, just to indicate that. <clears throat> so look, the pass rates. Let's have a look at the UAE, what it is worldwide and what it is in the UK. Because, um, so from 2009, um, tables mean nothing really to me. <clears throat> I've got some pictures of how this all looked, okay? But the good news is in the past, apart from 2018 locally, um, we've done really well, okay? Um, the advice is, and this is global, and you can see this here, we started tracking this at headquarters in 2019. Have you sat the prep preparation course and passed? Okay. <clears throat> so you can see there that 37.7% of people have taken a course and they passed, whereas 26% didn't take a course. So <clears throat> you have got a better chance of passing the exam 
if you do a course, okay? So whether that's our course we do locally, whether it's one that's done online, and I'll come up to that later on, you've got an advantage by doing a course, okay? So there's the pretty diagram, okay? So the blue line is the UAE, the orange is worldwide, and the gray is UK. So I threw a trend line on that. So over the past 10 years, there are less people passing the exam. Pass rate doesn't change, the exam doesn't change. It doesn't get any easier, it doesn't get any harder, but there are fewer people passing. And it's because people are not prepared for the exam when they take it the first time, okay? These are first time passes, okay? <clears throat> people are not preparing, people are not doing courses, um, but there you can see the worldwide and the UK one is <clears throat> fairly steady. The UAE line was up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so it <clears throat> varies from year to year. So, for example, like I say, in 2016, let's just go back. So, in 2018, only one person passed. And out of those 15 people, no one sat our course. So, <clears throat> does a moral sit the course, better chance of passing. <clears throat> so throughout the course, we'll get to know how to tackle the exam in various ways, okay? And I'll, I'll say it now, and whenever you see me, <clears throat> I'll always say it. You need to know and have your own time management. You need to have your own program, and you need to stick to it, okay? So there's a sample one. Part one, part two, okay? <clears throat> Stick to it. If you can't finish it, write in your exam paper, I can't finish this, but I do this, 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 and this. Move on to the next question. <clears throat> You've not got time to spend two hours on scheme one, one hour on scheme two, because you'll never finish the rest, okay? <clears throat> I know people that have changed the question one hour into the exam, but they fail because they run out of time, okay? Use the first 15 minutes to make sure the paper that you have and the question you take is the one that you want to do, okay? <clears throat> so look, the cause is a failure. Um, I never really like talking about failure. I always want to talk about how to pass, but know where the causes are and then you'll pass. Okay, well look, so for the candidates, the alternative schemes are not sufficiently distinct enough. And the workshops will help you to work through that, okay? Here we go again, poor time management. It comes up all the time. This is about your own time management as an engineer. So the examiners, <clears throat> what they say is, there's a lack of ability in conceptual engineering. So there you go again, concept, okay? Some of the biggest areas that we come across where people have not got the experience is in conceptualization, okay? So you need to do lots of past papers, one or two courses, and attend our workshop, okay? Poor drawing skills, okay? Yeah, I hear everyone shouting, but we use Reddit, we use BIM, we use CAD now. You need to know how to communicate, okay? And sketching and drawing is an important part of that, okay? Um, one day that may change, you know, one day we might be doing this in 3D visualization, but that's, that's a long time. It's not the normal now, it's becoming the normal. And the Institute are looking on how to, I'm not going to say modernize the exam, but they're looking on how to make it slightly more relevant to what could be happening in maybe a decade. There's an inability to deal with client problems and poor letter writing, okay? So you've designed your building, the client wants to stick a roller coaster through it. All you're interested in is, it's either not gonna work or it's gonna cost fees, okay? They don't wanna hear about those in the letters. They want proactive, positive letters, okay? <clears throat> People fail, fail on weak exam technique. So this is where we will talk about always do past papers, then do timed past papers, Come on courses like this. So people, as you can see there, not, there's a large percentage of people that do not take 
Um, <clears throat> of course, you know, and I know people that have said, oh, I'll just do one or two. And um, <clears throat> I should be fine. You're not fine, okay? <clears throat> I know very good engineers who have been very blase about it and walked into the exam uh, <clears throat> and have come out quivering like a quivering jelly, okay? Because they're just not prepared. <clears throat> and here's a big one. Don't read, <clears throat> not reading the question properly, okay? I've just done uh, an exam on something completely different. <clears throat> and one of the big problems there for me was not reading the question properly, right? So I had to train myself to read the question properly. Okay? <clears throat> and here's an interesting one. The inability to design is very rarely cited as a reason for failure, okay? Again, as I said, <clears throat> when we started, this isn't about teaching you how to design. If you've come to learn about how to design, you're in the wrong lecture, okay? <clears throat> so how are we doing? It's quarter to eight, okay. <clears throat> so there are other resources. Again, these uh, slides are gonna be made available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So you can go through them at your own leisure and pick up these links. Um, so look, there are 30 sample solutions to exam papers, okay? There's a lifetime there, okay? So you've got no excuse for finding papers and then sample solutions, okay? Go on to the Institute's website, top tips for the charts that ship exam. I've gone through quite a few of them. Um, I've got a few more than they've got there, but look at it, okay? They run an online preparation course there, and I think, I'm not too sure exactly when that is now, um, but it's, I think it's September. I think it says, um, yeah, <clears throat> you look at the bottom there, it's September. So look, concept design is always a big problem. And then people always come to me going, John, John, we need more experience, okay? Well, I found there, there are four resources. And I think one of them's a course as well um, on some conceptual design. So grab this off YouTube, get the links, have a look. So the workshops. <clears throat> okay, so this is from last year. And this is what we're gonna try and emulate in the workshops, okay? So it's imperative that, and I'll come on to this, that you do the work prior to the workshop. So when we share it, you make absolutely maximize the use of the people's time and the experts that we've got, okay? Um, so do you remember those days being in close proximity of people, okay? So you may, because the bats are against you here, but there are two or three people in there that are either on the committee or are helping with this course, okay? <clears throat> so this is last year. So when I was at the beginning of the lecture saying about these people, the real people, and they really did do this course, okay? So there you go, you can see Sajid, there's actually two of those. You see Julia. Um, <clears throat> You were put on the spot, you had 15 minutes to do a concept design, high level, and then you came up and you drew it, and it was like a little bit of a race against another engineer, okay? Um, and it worked. And Sajif and Julia are a testament to that, as are one or two others in there. There's, in that crowd, there are four people that took the exam since and have passed, um, because they, you know, they were helped by a course, okay? Now that was a chartered course, okay? So um, I think Callum still is online. Um, so good old Gavin there, he was doing his associate member charter, okay? But he was still attempting this exam, okay? So we cater for other people, just message me, and then we can help you out. Um, well, there you go. The good old days, these are different days. <clears throat> so um, please put the effort in when you're in the workshops to prepare, okay? We don't get paid for doing this. We, we do because we love being engineers and we love teaching. <clears throat> okay, so the program, okay? We're gonna be doing this over July and August. So for July, so in one week's time, we will issue the paper to people who have registered. So that registration will go out tomorrow. We will issue you a paper <clears throat> with some instructions, and then you've got to do, follow those instructions, but basically we're looking at sketches. 
Make sure you can scan them in and be ready to share them on the screen and talk about them for session two on the 14th. Okay, so we're we looking for two distinct solutions. And Simon is going to do his concrete and steel tips. And then we're going to do this again. We're going to issue another paper. And then on session four, in workshop two, <clears throat> we'll go through the concept. But we'll also concentrate on your drawings as well and how to improve them. And then in August, we've got workshop three, where again, we will have issued a paper one week before to give you time to prepare sketches, only sketches and ideas for workshop three. And then there'll be an open discussion about method statements, programs, and <clears throat> anything else that you want to discuss. Basically, anything that's on those YouTube lectures, and then we can discuss them there, or contact me directly, okay? But it all, it all revolves around you as engineers putting the effort in from when we've issued the papers, turning up and then sharing and talking with everyone else about your ideas. Okay? So the whole idea is to be interactive. There are three people that are coming on this course that that works for, okay? They're a testament to this process. If you get involved, you've got a better chance. <clears throat> and bear this in mind, we're only asking one week to do some sketches, okay? I have one engineer that I mentor who did three papers this week, full papers, okay? <clears throat> so, <laughs> so <clears throat> it's possible to do sketches. We're all busy people. We'll put the time in and you'll be rewarded, okay? And then if, uh, <clears throat> if you look on the 9th of August, we will issue one paper for you to do from start to finish under a timed condition, okay? We're gonna issue it before a weekend. You have the weekend to do it. We'll make sure it's timed in seven hours. You'll then email it to us. We will mark it. And then on Saturday session six, we'll have a review of it and we'll take individual papers and go through the good points, the not so good points, where you can improve. Now, last year we had four, only four people will take the mock exam. Okay, uh, two completed it, and two people are doing this course because they passed. So, look, you know, <clears throat> there are 65 people online. We will start whittling people away as we go through this, um, but towards the end, you will be rewarded. Okay. It's, it's all about effort. You put effort in and you'll get rewarded for it, okay? So our workshops will help you concentrate on parts where you're likely to fail, okay? When we go through this, when you get to about workshop three, you'll, we personally will know where you'll need improvements. You will know where you need to improve, okay? Um, mainly it's time management, but as you can see, I go on about it all the time. And if you practice those areas, you'll gain the points. Literally every point is valuable, okay? We help you to practice more questions without having to dedicate seven hours for each attempt. And we encourage you to take part. The whole point of this is it's two way. It's not me talking to you all the time. It's about being interactive, okay? And again, I'll say it again, you get out of it what you put in. Sit there, just listen, you'll get nothing out of this, okay? And then we're suggesting you need to spend three and a half, four hours to practice key aspects of papers. Okay. <clears throat> so your aim before taking the ecstasy exam, and these are bare minimum, okay? I, I, you need to do at least twice, maybe three times as. We need to attempt two questions during these workshops. I'd like you to do all four, which includes the exam. Um, practice three full questions from the whole range of papers. Like I say, um, I mentor in a group of people now who have probably done three questions in the past two or three weeks, if not a lot more, okay? It's all about practice, practice, practice. Do timed runs. It says two timed runs here before the exam. Do one now, see where you're falling down or where your good points are. 
and then do more towards the end. It is imperative you do timed runs. And I did it. I locked myself in my grandmother's back room. Nobody disturbed me. Okay. And then it's all about managing your time. I think that's about it. Okay. So thank you for listening for these 50 odd minutes. And thank you for feeding back. Um, good luck in the workshops and the mock exam. I'll be popping in and out of some of these and I'll be at the end for the mock exam review. Um, so I think now we'll take some q and I don't think we've had anything as we've been going along. Um, but if we want five minutes to actually type a few questions, if anyone's got anything there. Um, I see that G has given me something there for about IPD. So while people are thinking about questions, let me just um, speak to Sajib G. So we've got his IPD final report and portfolio, which is not part of this, but you still need to do that. Um, so G, I, just contact me directly um, and I will answer you on this in full. Um, we have a question. Yeah, there's answers, isn't it? Um, no, we have a question is in the chat. Um, so what are the requirements to be qualified for to appear for the exam? I'd say that you just need to prepare and uh, fill in the forms. Yeah. Um, I mean, you need to be a graduate member. Um, and I think if you're, <clears throat> if you, if you apply to be a graduate member of the Institute of Structural Engineers, for those that are not, I mean, I know there is a few people on here that are not members. If you get, if you get to be a graduate member, you have got the qualifications to do the exam. Yeah. Anything else? Have we got? Um, I haven't so got a chat. First um, few workshops, do we get full questions uh, paper or just one question to be attempted by all? Um, um, one question only. All right, I've got the chat box up now. Yeah, it's just one question. I mean, we're only going to do, um, you're only going to get a choice at the end where we've got the mock exam. So you get a full paper and you'll get a choice of five to look at. So throughout the whole workshops, we're just going to give you just one to look at. Um, look, I mean, it, it all boils down to busy people as well. Uh, you're busy people. So, um, we need to give you something just to focus on. But the way that I all mentor is we start off with one, and then what we need to do is then get to a point where if I give you two, you have 15 minutes where you don't touch a pen and then look at it. But for the purposes of this workshop, it's just one question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a graduate member. Um, will I be allowed to appear for the exam in January? 2021 if I register by this month. Ah, yes. And it depends on the qualification, right? Yeah, I mean, if you've got the right qualifications, then if you submit the form G now, um, there is a panel, the panel and committee sit in London in September, because I, I, I sit on the panel for the academic qualifications panel. So they sit in September, then they will review it. So by October, you will know if you can take the exam or not, or if you need extra learning. Now, <clears throat> where, who, who's the question, where is it? It depends if you've got a master's or a BTEC or an MTEC as well. Um, so is it Jay Abrata? Right, okay, yeah. So you've got a master's, okay. So um, you've got an MTech and a BTech, which probably means you've done enough, um, you've got enough there to be considered for the exam. Usually, if you've only got a BTech, then you need to do some additional learning. Now, that's not necessarily getting a master's, but experiential in um, a varied subject. But yeah, if you've got master's, there's a, yeah, it's possible. Do the course, 
Um, you need to get your expression of interest in though before September. So it's very tight. Um, um, we have a few other questions coming in. Yeah. I have passed the professional review in 2018. Is there a maximum number of exams I can write before I need to redo the interview? Um, so speak to membership at iStructure.org because if it's 2018, um, <clears throat> because we changed the way that they do your chartership now, so you've got, you, you've got to pass your PRI and your chartership and your, the exam, different times, you can do them at different times. Um, however, if you pass the exam, it doesn't matter when you do the PRI, but if you pass the PRI, you need to do the exam within three years and then you've got to do the exam again. Uh, sorry, you've got to do the PRI again. So um, that, that's a close case. So please get in touch with the Institute. But I think if, depending on when you want to do the exam, you might have to do the PRI again. And we've had cases in the UAE where people have had to do the PRI again because it was, it was five years, okay? Um, okay, I've seen that there, yeah. <clears throat> However, the maximum um, number of exams I can write. Um, so <clears throat> there's, not, there's not a maximum number of exams. Um, it's, it's a time thing. However, if you fail the exam five times, um, you've got to do your PRI again. But <clears throat> that's near enough two and a half, three years anyway. So... Yeah. Um, one more question is, could you share how to address the lateral stability? I think um, we covered that at the beginning that we are not going to go through design in detail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if you don't know how to brace a stru structure with cross bracing or moment frames, um, <clears throat> do the workshops. And then you'll see. Um, so Matthew, yeah. Um, Matthew's just coming with through about different codes. Yeah, absolutely. You state at the beginning of your paper <clears throat> what code you use. It could be from South America. It could be from Iceland, okay? It could be the IS, the BS, um, EN. It could be whatever. Um, but just state it, okay? This is a global exam, you know? They're not gonna be British codes all the way through. Um, so use, use whatever. Just to add, uh, John, uh, here yeah. uh, you're asking a different codes for a design. Yeah. In the exam, better you recommend one code, whatever you follow, instead of mixing <laughs> the codes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's always a preference, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, You can, as long as it's stated what code you're using, it doesn't matter. So. <coughs> but yeah, you want constant. But to be honest, you're not doing a lot of design. Okay, you, I'll go back to my slide on, um, if I can find my slide on um, time management, okay. There you go. So from approximately 1.30 to about three o'clock, you're gonna be doing design. So you're gonna be designing a pile, a foundation, maybe a raft, maybe one column, maybe one beam, maybe an edge beam, maybe a bit of a slab, maybe a bit of bracing. Okay, so you really are gonna be using only one code anyway, or two codes, you know, maybe one for steel, maybe one for concrete, maybe something for your foundations, okay? So, <clears throat> yeah, Sam is right. Try keep it consistent, um, but, you know, this is all about stating your assumptions and sticking with it, okay? <clears throat> um, but yeah, so G, um, about your IPD, just contact me directly, okay? Um, but have a look, we've got also online, so G, I've got a, um, 
I've got a, um, a, a video on this on how to do all of this, so read it and then have a look. <clears throat> um, one yeah. last question from the Q&A. Uh, from my trials at looking at exam papers, it always seems briefs can be interpreted in more than one way. How is a fail or not compliant no, with the brief decided? <laughs> no, um, you can, you can interpret it. The brief is one way. Uh, there are, you know, it's, <coughs> um, you know, it's, it's all about column spacing. It's all about envelopes of buildings and ceiling heights. So they are, it's very definitive, okay? So your structural zones are definitive. So it's, yeah, depending on how many you've done, but anyway. Um, uh, drawings need to be to scale, yes. Well, I'll re I actually read the paper because when, if you go to, um, I can't zoom in on it, but the, the two paces, the two pages right at the front tell you what you need to do, okay? And it, in proportion, I think is what they, they use, okay? Um, the paper that you are given is A3 and it's five millimeter blocks. So you can draw to scale, you can freehand this. I did enough sketching when I worked as steelwork fabricators that I didn't need to use a scale room, all right? But I, that's just my practice, okay? Um, <clears throat> and this, I don't think it can enlarge this, to be honest. Um, but, um, I had this question from Nabil, and I know Nabil is online, but they did sort of change the wording over the years. So, um, in proportion is, I think, the answer. But read it, because they do change. They do change what they say there, okay? Yeah, so usually just going back onto that brief, um, it's if you change column spacing, or it's you contravene the structural zones, they're failures. So I mean, that's, well, you're right there, Julia, uh, read, read, and read again, you know. I know another version, which is read the completely bleak, bleak question. So it's all about reading the question, okay. Um, so yeah, Jay Brata there. I, Will BS codes be allowed since these are superseded by BSEM? Um, one or two codes aren't. Right? I know one steel code, which hasn't been changed in 50 years. So, um, yeah, state your code, stick to it. Okay. Yeah, so Ragu there, yeah, you get graph paper for the drawings, A3 and a square paper. Right. So there's a question there from Paul. Pull top. Um, it's about see. professional review interview. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you attempt the exam, assuming you get a positive result, how long do you have before successfully getting through the professional review interview? Well, look. Um, if you take, it depends when you take the exam because the exam twice a year, and the professional review is only in November or December. Okay. Um, but one of the good things about doing the exam is it satisfies some of the core objectives, you know? So, um, I'd have to, Paul, we'd have to have a separate conversation because it's all about knowing where you are in your um, career. Um, but, yeah. So there's another one there from Raheel Bashir. So when Weight is more for the structural design skills or method statements. But uh, you just got to look, Raheel, at um, the marks, okay? So, so <clears throat> I pulled it up there. So for the design, you've got the concept, which is 40 marks, and then the detailed design, which is 20 marks. So there's, 70, there's 60 marks. So 60% is design. But when you, can think, when you consider that the pass is 40 marks and only 30 to 35 percent of people get that 40 percent you need to have as many marks as possible okay um so that's the answer to that yeah 
weightage you need to get a mark every four minutes. Okay. Um, have we got any more questions? I'm going to, if we can take one more, if anyone's got anything. So, Mohammed, there. Um, uh, we've that... got a tip from Nabil. Um, he reminds us that there are examiner reports on the website. Uh, that are very useful and um, people should just go to the website and have a look after practicing. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, if you go through um, on, <laughs> excuse me, and you go through the tips, and go through these tips here, sorry. <clears throat> when you go through the tips there, so the top tips for charts of exams is all about getting past papers, reading the examiner's reports every year. <clears throat> um, but I can tell you what they say. Concept design, no good. Drawings, not clear, no good. Insufficient details. Method statement, bad. Construction program, bad. Letter writing, bad. So <clears throat> every year it's the same thing but then they'll just go into other bits where the question was poorly attempted. So if you start nailing your drawing, your concept design, your method statements and construction programs, you're going to pass. <clears throat> okay, so, um, and we've got someone there, Anonymous. What material would you carry to the exam? Pens, coloured ones, a calculator, and a folder of information that you need and maybe one or two books. And a clock. And a clock, yes, thank you. And a clock. And something to eat and drink. And that's it. But we'll go through these. Throughout the workshops, um, you'll get a feeling for what's needed. Um, we've got, um, when you go do Sajif, um, <clears throat> when you do Sajif Kumar's uh, workshop, <clears throat> so Jeef has got a list of things and references um, that he'll go through. Um, it's, it's very good. Um, it's a very good list. Um, I'm, not it up here because I'm just doing a high level talk. But, you know, that's in workshop three. So we're encouraging you to stay for all of the workshops. Okay. Um, that seems to be all answered. We got anything else sticking there, Julia, or is that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think all questions answered, I believe. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think, uh, thank you very much, John, for your, uh, always your interest uh, to encourage and talent. You know, I'm just, members, I'm just, everybody. <laughs> I just want to say that we will do um, a quick survey by email <clears throat> to the attendees. Um, just to see what was good, what was bad, <clears throat> um, what would you like, <clears throat> what do you think would be helpful, um, and any other questions that you may have. So uh, that'll come out in the next few days. Um, yeah. Mr. Abdullah, can you switch on your video? Yeah. First of all, I should uh, thanks Mr. Abdullah, who is uh, brain behind uh, arranging our webinar uh, on Zoom. Uh, Big clap to uh, Mr. Abdullah and Julia. You are the two people who made us uh, is possible on this uh, digital platform. Again, mm -hmm. Mr. John. Yeah. And uh, thank you, audiences, for all. And we'll meet uh, soon. Maybe uh, next session is on 14, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so Julia and Iman will be running that. So, um, yeah. We've got Julia who um, got chartered this year and Iman who chartered um, quite a few years ago. But again, another one of my um, engineers that I mentored. Um, so you see there's a running theme here. Um, the people that the committee get involved with a mentor become successful. Yeah, good. Um, I, think, I think that's... I, know, that. I, I, I can see a majority of, uh, of attendees uh, Maybe may not be a graduates or they're trying to go for an exam. So 
my request is uh, everybody who are interested to uh, progress in chartered better go through the website i understand the memberships uh, and their qualifications if you have any questions uh, you can write a mail to memberships uh, uh, group or a mail id which is uh, they they'll reply immediately and if any further question you can contact us locally a committee members or uh, anybody who are interested uh, of any requirement regarding ipd we are always there to help you uh, to address any questions and lastly we have uh, a technical talk on 7th uh, i request uh, if anybody interested to join uh, that uh, talk for next 7th we already issued a, a notification please register thank you all okay good night night, night.